I'm Dan. And I'm Jordan. We're really excited about this series because we're going to look at some basics when following Jesus. Yeah, and that doesn't mean there has to be a formula to follow Jesus, but we want to know where it starts, what it means, and what it looks like to be in a relationship with Jesus. And we're going to start at the very beginning. The big idea for today is following Jesus starts with hearing the good news. Awesome. I am so excited for today's God story. Let's watch this. If Mary had Jesus and Jesus was a little lamb, does that mean Mary had a little lamb? Hey everyone, it's Alyssa. Welcome to today's God Story. So I grew up in a Christian family and knowing Jesus was always a part of my life. And maybe that's the case for you and today you're hearing about Jesus for the millionth time or maybe today you're hearing his good news message for the first time. No matter what the case is, I know that this story is an amazing story that can change our lives. Today's big idea is following Jesus starts with hearing the good news. This story is from Acts chapter 10, and it starts with this man named Cornelius. Hello. He was a Roman army officer, and he loved God. He was a faithful follower of God, he helped the poor, he was a really generous man. But he wasn't a Jewish man like the other early Christians were. He was a Gentile who's someone who isn't Jewish. And Jews and Gentiles weren't really supposed to hang out with each other. One afternoon, while Cornelius was praying, God sent him a vision, that's like a picture in his mind, of an angel who told him to send some men to Joppa to look for a man named Simon Peter. Today, we just call him Peter. After the angel was gone, Cornelius sent some men to go and find Peter. The next day, the men were getting close to the place where Peter was staying. In the meantime, Peter was going up to the roof to pray, and he was also really hungry. While Peter was praying, he had a vision too. In this vision, a large sheet came down from the sky, and on this sheet were a bunch of animals. Peter heard a voice tell him that he could kill and eat these animals. But in Jewish law, some animals were unclean to eat. Eat. And so Peter said no, because he didn't want to break God's law. But God was telling Peter that he could eat these animals. That must have felt really confusing to Peter. God told Peter that he was making things that were previously unclean and not allowed to be eaten, clean and allowed to be eaten. Then, after all of this happened, the sheet was pulled back up into heaven. When Peter was finished praying, he was wondering what all of this could mean. Just then, the men who were sent to find Peter arrived where he was staying. The Holy Spirit told Peter that there were men here to see him and that they had been sent from God. So Peter went down to meet the men. The men told him that Cornelius had sent them and that God wanted him to go and meet Cornelius. When the men brought Peter to Cornelius, Cornelius had a group of friends and family there. Peter spoke with Cornelius and told him that it's against the law for him to go into his house because remember, Jews and Gentiles weren't really supposed to hang out at that time. But then Peter said, God has shown me that I don't have to think of anyone as impure or unclean. Peter realized that that was what God had shown him through the vision. So Peter was able to enter Cornelius' home and be his friend. Cornelius told Peter about the vision he had had and then said, now we're all here and ready to hear the message that God has commanded you to tell us. So Peter was sent for by Cornelius so that Peter could share the good news message of Jesus with Cornelius and all his friends and family. This was an opportunity set up by God for Peter to share this message with them. Let's read what happens next. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God treats everyone the same, he said. He accepts people from every nation. He accepts anyone who has respect for him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. It is the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Peter was having this light bulb moment that God accepts people from all nations and that it's Jesus who brings us all together. He goes on to say, you know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Jesus went around doing good. He healed all who were under the devil's power. God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by nailing him to a cross. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead. God allowed Jesus to be seen, but he wasn't seen by all the people. He was seen only by us. We are witnesses whom God had already chosen. We ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people. He told us to tell people that he is the one appointed by God to judge the living and the dead. All the prophets tell about him. They say that all who believe in him have their sins forgiven through his name. 
While Peter was talking and as they were hearing this good news message, the Holy Spirit came on the people in the room who were listening. The Jewish believers were amazed that the Holy Spirit came on the Gentile believers too. This meant that God wants to transform everyone's heart. Then Peter baptized Cornelius and all his friends and family. To be baptized means you get dunked underwater as a symbol to show everyone that you want to follow Jesus forever. So Cornelius and everyone else there became followers of Jesus. This story really reminds us how important it is to share the good news message of Jesus with everyone because following Jesus starts with hearing the good news. That's the big idea for today and a big idea for our entire lives. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I will catch you next time. Cornelius already knew about God, but when he heard about Jesus, it changed his life forever. Yeah, and we heard about how the Holy Spirit came down upon Cornelius and his family, and their eyes were open to the love of Jesus. They immediately believed. And it all started with hearing about Jesus. But that can look different for each of us. You wanted to show us something, Dan? Yeah, let's watch this. Have you ever wondered what goes on when you hear a sound? Well, sound is actually made up of waves. And these waves, they travel through the air, into your ear, and then your ear tells your brain that you're hearing a sound. It's pretty crazy, right? Totally. And you know, I don't often think about it, but we live in a world filled with all kinds of sounds. Yeah, and we actually have a couple mystery sounds here today that we're gonna play and see if you and Jacob can guess what they are. A listening challenge, huh? I think I'm up for it. Stretch ah. those ears out. All right, well, Christian recorded a couple of sounds for us, so we're gonna play them one by one and see if you can guess what they are. You ready? I think so. All right. Here's the first one. Oh, I think I know that sound. I've heard it way too many times. That's a school bell. All right, let's see if you're right. Yep, I thought so. I spent years and years at school. I think I know what that sounds like. Exactly, you know the sound because you've heard it before. Let's see if you can guess the next one. Yeah, that's, that sounds like boiling water, like a kettle? Yeah, you might be right. Let's find out. You got it. You probably heard that a lot before. Totally, I make tea all the time at home. Some say the best tea. Well, I'll take your word for it. Let's listen to the next sound. Oh, that sounded like a, a small animal. Uh, like a, a bird cawing? Yeah, let's give it a shot. <laughs> How did you get that right? That's crazy. All right, let's listen to the next sound. Oh, I'm not sure about this one, Dan. Um, is it like droplets of rain? Let's try rain. Wow, so that was actually bacon. Uh, there's probably a pretty good reason you don't recognize that sound, right? Yeah, I don't eat bacon, so that's not a sound that I'm really familiar with. Makes sense. Okay, what have you got next for me, Dan? Let's listen. Yeah, I don't have any idea what that one was. Yeah, that was pretty weird. Let's find out. Oh my goodness, I've never seen a dog play with a toy like that before. Yeah, that was crazy. Okay, we have one sound left. Let's listen to it. All right. Yeah, you've got me again. I have no idea. That was a weird one. Let's find out what it is. Oh, a paper shredder. That makes sense now that I see it, but it's not something that I would have used before, so 
that's probably why I didn't recognize it. Yeah, and that's exactly the point we wanted to illustrate today. If you haven't heard a sound before, then there's no way you're gonna recognize it. Oh, totally true. I've been in school, so I recognize the school bell, and I make tea, so I recognize the kettle, but those other sounds I haven't heard before, it makes sense that I wouldn't recognize them. Well, you see, it's the same with Jesus. See, we only know Jesus because someone specifically told us about him. So that inspires me to go out and tell others about Jesus so they'll know who he is. Oh, absolutely. We know that following Jesus starts with hearing the good news. So let's go out and share about him with everyone that we know so that they can recognize the love and the truth of Jesus and they'll have the chance to become Jesus followers too. Love it. Let's do that. What I was trying to demonstrate is that when you've heard something before, you can recognize what it is based on memory. Like when Jacob heard the school bell, he knew what it was because he's heard it so many times before. But if you've never heard something before, you have no way of knowing what it is. Yeah, that's exactly the same thing with Jesus. We know about Jesus because we've heard about him from someone else. So that's why we need to go and share Jesus with others. That's awesome. Let's break into our small groups and see what this looks like in our own lives.